What's up and welcome into a fresh Locked On Bulls. Thursday, October 28th, 2021. I'm Matt. That's Big Dave. Up ahead on today's show, we've got a little bit of injury news with the Bulls all-star guard, Zach Levine. A little bit of a uh, a boo-boo on his thumb. We'll talk about mm-hmm. that and the updates we got from Zach and Billy Donovan in the first segment. And then the back end of today's program, y'all, we're leading up to Bulls next tonight. It's Joakim Noah Knight at the UC. I got my... Nobody goes to Cleveland on vacation shirt on. Me and Big Dave are breaking down our favorite Joe Keem Noah moments on the back end of today's show. That's all ahead on a fresh Lockdown Bulls. Let's go. You are Locked On Bulls, your daily podcast on the Chicago Bulls. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Here are your hosts, Matt Peck and Big Dave Watson. What's up and welcome in to Locked on Bulls, part of Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Matt Peck. You can follow me on Twitter at Bulls underscore Peck. You can follow my co-host Big Dave Watson at Bow, B-A-W-L Sports. You can follow us at Locked on Bulls. Shoot us a text or leave us a voicemail at 331-979-1369 for our weekly mailbag episodes. We did voicemails, a whole bunch of fun voicemails on yesterday's episode. So go check that out if you haven't already because you could be on there. (laughs) <laughs> All right. Uh, Big Dave, first and foremost, how are you, buddy? I'm doing very well. I feel good. I'm all right. I'm rested. I'm fed. Uh, I got my Prince shirt on. I'm good. I mean, I'm, I'm good, man. I'm happy. I'm very happy. How about you? How are you, sir? I'm doing well. Uh, doing well. Obviously excited about the uh, Bulls Knicks going with you. Um, and it sounds yeah, like a whole yeah. bunch of Bulls fans are going to be packing the U. For this Thursday night game against the Knicks, uh, including a bunch of people who have like hit us up on Twitter and in our DMs to say, yeah. like, hey, I'm going too. So here's what we're going to do. Me and Big Dave are going to try and get to the UC uh, as early before tip off as possible. And then we'll let y'all know where we are and then just come say hi. Come have a beer mm-hmm. with us and, and let us bask in the glory of the Bulls being relevant again and all of us being there to celebrate Joakim. But I am also a little bit on edge uh, today, Big Dave, because of this injury news to one mm. Zach Levine. We got to talk about it. Thankfully, it doesn't sound too serious. Uh, it was uh, Sham Sharanya who first broke the news um, uh, Wednesday morning, saying that he had a small ligament tear in the thumb of his non-shooting hand, but intends to p- play through the pain. Um, had an MRI that revealed this small tear in his uh, thumb lig- ligament and then Zach at morning shoot around basically said it's kind of more like uh, closely resembling a strain because the tear is so small and he said you know it's not my play it's not my shooting hand it doesn't hurt that bad what I want to do is play through it well wh- what's your reaction to this news uh, from from Zach Levine in this thumb uh, I first heard it from a friend of mine he said uh uh, I'm paraphrasing, but it was like, man, the Zach news isn't as bad as I thought it was. And I said, and you were like, what, what are you talking about? <laughs> That's exactly what I said. I said, what? Wait, wait, what? And he didn't respond to me. So I went on Twitter and I started, I was like, maybe he's talking about football and he's talking about Zach Wilson. And I go look up Zach Wilson's injury. I'm like, oh yeah, that Zach Wilson injury was tough. Cause I know he's not talking about Zach Levine, but he spelled it with the H and Zach's mm-hmm. brother. And I was like, no, I was end up looked up Zach and I just saw, you know, Sham Sharan. I said, no, oh, he's okay. All right, he can still play. All right. <laughs> that's that really was my emotions. I didn't like the wave there uh, that I went on, but that was the wave, Matt. So I wasn't happy. I mean, I'm sure he isn't happy either, but I am very calm and collected now, knowing that one, it's not on his shooting hand, and two, it is something that he can play with because it is simply about the uh pain tolerance. And as we know about Zach, man. He has played through some pain over these years, man, for real. Yeah, he he is a tough dude. And obviously it's good that it is non-shooting hand as opposed to shooting hand. But we maybe saw this, this uh, you know, pain in his thumb affecting him. Uh, and I think Darnell Mayberry put the video out uh, on Twitter. That play when the Bulls are trying to hold off that late furious Raptors rally, um, mm-hmm you know, earlier this week and Zach is bringing the ball up the court and he tries to go behind the back from his right hand to his left hand. 
and the ball just like flies away from him and you're like yeah. what the heck and yeah. we you know looking back on you realize that there were a couple different moments in that game where zach was kind of like trying to like shake out his hand look like maybe it was bothering him in some way um and then he said yeah it was already kind of like a jammed thumb and then at mm -hmm. one point in that game against toronto it sort of got like bent back awkwardly and that sort of mm -hmm. exacerbated the the pain or the jam uh, in the thumb that was already there and mm -hmm. then during wednesday shoot around zach talking about whether or not he's going to play through this said this quote i don't want to put myself in any danger i don't have all the mm -hmm. information on it yet we'll see how i feel tomorrow and going from there you know me i try to play through everything <laughs> if i'm able to i will if, yeah. if not we'll see how it goes uh and then you know billy Donovan added to that that zach did do some things but was not a full participant in mm -hmm. wednesday practice so we'll see we're recording this episode actually on wednesday uh, ahead of dropping it on thursday so hopefully you know by this time tomorrow by thursday afternoon we will hear yep Zach's going to play um, because right. for, for as big of a game as this is the Knicks coming into Chicago three and one, the bulls four and O oh, we might have ourselves an amazing long dormant bulls Knicks rivalry back on yes. the cusp of being back. And if mm -hmm. Zach couldn't play in that game, gosh, that would be so disappointing. It would be. And, and I just don't think Zach would go out like that. Like Zach is going to play unless they say Zach, there's no way you're, you should play this game. There's Your thumb will fall off if you dribble the basketball. That's pretty much the only way that I see him not playing in this game, uh, Matt. Because, again, it's the non-shooting hand, and I think that's what's hugely important. And I'm also, I'm also glad that this was caught and they knew what was the problem, and, and so they have a way to kind of deal with as far as the pain tolerance and what he can handle and what medications and things he needs to take and, you know, what he needs to do. So I'm sure there's, there's plenty of rest going on for him. I'm sure uh, with that thumb, but I think he'll be ready. Like overall, Matt, I think he'll be ready to go. It just sucks because, you know, coming off of that, you know, four and O finally breaking that streak. And then mm -hmm. we're finally playing against, you know, a meaningful team and a bunch of meaningful teams uh, after this game that you know we were going in you know riding high and so it's just like oh you know we're already going through the patrick williams you know shoulder stuff and mm -hmm. so now we're like ah we gotta do this to zach ah that sucks but it's the fact he could be out there playing uh will will be helpful but it also matt made me it answered the question as to why we thought zach was off these past few, you know a couple games because mm -hmm. we were looking at him like something's not right like you know he, he's not playing well we were just you know chalking it up to him just you know having a bad run at it but obviously yeah. it was that thumb yeah um and look it in the grand scheme of things you have to be relieved that it's something hopefully knock on wood as minor as this um i, I saw some doctor chiming in underneath the shams tweet you know uh, like a sports doctor twitter account saying yeah. it was most likely this particular ligament in the thumb and you know if you you know, put it, put some kind of brace around it because it's your non-shooting hand and let it heal. This thing could heal it, itself, you know, from, from four to six weeks. So mm -hmm. I guess right now the only big concern or potential big concern is if Zach, with how tough he is and knowing, hey, we, we got a chance this season to do something fun, to do something special. Mm -hmm. We want to win. Mm -hmm. I want to win. Yeah. I'm playing through this that he could somehow aggravate it or or injure it more in a you know fully physical five on five regular season game kind of action that's the risk versus reward that zach the team doctors and billy and his staff are going to have to sort of weigh out over the next days and weeks yeah yeah that's definitely what they'll be um looking at um a friend of mine who used to play basketball not on the pro level but he used to play basketball for sure um was telling me about this injury today when i asked he was like well honestly these things heal kind of quickly um and the good thing is it's not a shooting hand and things i'm like yeah but it's an injury and he should not be injured and i hate it you know he's like relax <laughs> he'll be fine it'll be okay but i think it again matt it, it's gonna be bothersome obviously because it's an injury and it's an injury to your hand and you need your hands i don't care if it's a hangnail or something like that it, it, it's be bothersome to him but the one thing i just know is just like guys like kobe and things like that like zach is tough man and right. Jack plays through this kind of stuff. So I'm expecting him to still be out there doing his thing, man. 
Because it's a big old game, Matt. I, I mean, Spike Lee will probably be there too. It's going to be a big old right. game, baby. It's a big one. And, and like, it's funny that so many Bulls fans on Twitter, as soon as this news dropped, like I quote tweeted the, the um, you know, breaking news from Sham saying like, Zach can have my thumb ligament. Like, I don't, I don't use that. I don't care. What's a thumb ligament. And then uh shout out to the guys at Bleacher Nation Bulls. They responded to me saying, I just sent mine to the advocate center. The more the merry. A lot of people <laughs> be like, yeah, take my thumb ligaments because Bulls fans are rallying around Zach and the whole team with such yeah. a fun and, and successful start to the season. And mm-hmm. then so shout out to Joshua Paul, who in response to that said, AK walking into his office with a stack of packages on his desk, like, and then it's Brad Pitt saying, what's in the box? <laughs> like, <laughs> AK just has a bunch of just sawed off human thumbs. Like, here, <laughs> transplant this. I packed it on ice. Zach could have my thumb. It's like that that movie Rudy when everybody was dropping that jersey on the coach's table. Like everybody just walking in, dropping their thumbs. This was that coach. It's just, of, it's just a bunch of Bulls fans sending their thumbs to the Bulls right. training center. Um, oh, okay. Speaking of people who are willing to, you know, sacrifice their body for Bulls victories, we got to talk about Joakim Noah, who will be honored oh. at the United Center later Thursday night. Uh, before we do that, though, if you want to put some money on this Bulls Knicks game or any NBA game, or maybe some NFL games this upcoming weekend, you know that there is one and only one place to do that. It's Bet Online, who are back and better than ever. A new web interface for the start of basketball season and more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online remains the number one spot for all the basketball and football action this season. Head to their new updated desktop or mobile website to sign up today and receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use promo code Locked On to receive that sign-up bonus. From basketball, football, baseball, postseason, NHL, boxing, and UFC, right to your favorite Vegas casino games, don't wait to take advantage of all the offers available for the 2021 season. So, you know, if you're like our our guy Kendall Gill and want to, like, I don't know, say put a wager on Derrick Rose scoring over his over-under line, Go to go to betonline.ag and do that, <laughs> and then and then we can all bask in the glory of Kendall Gill saying, "Did you see what D Rose did tonight?" And you could be like, "Yeah, but at least I made some money off of it, right, Dave?" So go to right, BetOnline, <laughs> the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your favorite sports. Bet online, it's where the game starts. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you know what, guys? After that game, when you're driving back home. You might hear something funny in your car and you might say to yourself, oh, man, I need to get this fixed. The weekend's coming up. I got to go to dealership, deal with that. You know, I might have to bring the kids with me because I need to give my significant other a break, you know, do stuff. I got maybe I take the dog and put them in the car because, you know, they're tripping. Anything. There's a lot of things you got to go through just to go get yourself a muffler, man. And then you got to deal with the people when you get there. You know, they all smell like, you know, disease and despair and you don't want to deal with none of that. Well, I'll tell you what. You can go just drive straight home after this Bulls victory against the Knicks and go straight to rockauto.com and type that right on in and save you some money. Save 30, 50, even 100% more for the same parts from a chain store or a car dealership. Rock Auto is a family-owned business serving those do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years. Reliably low prices for every single customer and all the parts that you could ever need. Trust me, they got it. So I want you to do this. What I want you to do to just go explore that easy to use website today or tonight and find yourself a solution to all your auto part needs. Go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or your truck. Right. Locked on into that. How did you hear about us section? That's locked on. Write that in. So they know that my main man, Matt, and myself, Big Dave, sent you mm-hmm. amazing selection. Reliably low prices. All the parts your car will ever need. Let Joe Kim know and hear you people. Rock Auto. Com. Joe Kim. All right, Dave, are you ready? Uh, no. We're recording this podcast a day ahead of time, and I already just beginning this segment. Whew, I felt a rush. I felt a rush come over my body. Whew, okay, here we go. We're going to talk about Joakim Noah for the remainder of yes, today's episode uh, and, and what he has meant to this Bulls franchise and some of our 
collective favorite moments from him. Um, and, and I feel like it kind of makes sense to go chronologically or at least more or less chronologically through his career, Big Dave, with the Bulls. Mm-hmm. So let's start with this. Okay. When the announcement was made by David Stern, mm-hmm. with the ninth overall pick, the Bulls select Joakim Noah, Florida. And he comes walking in in that seersucker suit, mm-hmm. hair popping out both sides of his fresh Bulls cap, and mm-hmm. a bow tie and that doofy, silly grin. What were you thinking? I was over the moon excited, Matt. I was very, very, very happy that they got Joe Kim Noah. I I remember listening. I didn't even watch that uh, championship game. I just remember listening because I was. I remember being in the garage and I was cleaning my car. And they were playing uh, Ohio State. You know, they had Greg Oden at that time. And Greg Oden was going up against Joe Kim Noah. And just all I kept hearing, I think it was Kevin Harlan who was calling the game. He just could not stop talking about Joe Kim Noah and his play on the floor. And I loved Joe Kim Noah in college, man. Like mm-hmm. that dude, all kinds of heart. You know what I'm saying? In college, dude. And he did. I love the fact that he moved at his own speed and did things his own kind of way in his own pace. But it was never at a detriment to the team. And you could just see that. You know what I'm saying? Like you could really see it. So when they got him, I'm talking about. I was super duper happy. And I thought everybody would feel like I did, Matt. And I was completely wrong. Everybody was like, what the hell are the Bulls doing? What is going on here? They couldn't believe they drafted him. And I went to work and friends, Matt, oh, my God. What are you, what? Did you see his suit? Did you see his hair? What are you talking about? He's going to be a flop. He can't play ball. And I'm telling all of them how good he is. I'm like, you don't right. win. You don't win best player of the Final Four being trash at center. You know right. how many people on that Florida team? And he won the – Right. I'm sorry. I'm not going to go deeper into the art, but that's the stuff I was yelling <laughs> at. Okay. And I can't tell you, Matt, how many people over the years have just come to me and apologized. <laughs> like, dude, okay, you know what? You were right. I was yeah. dead wrong about him, and I'm glad I was wrong about him. And look, you, you're you right that you were one of many – um uh, or I, I should say the, the Joakim non-believers who came up to you and, and issued that kind of apology were yeah. were wrong. And a lot of people, and this was in um, one of the many um, interviews that Casey Johnson posted over the last couple of days at NBC Sports Chicago. He's been interviewing a whole bunch of former coaches and, and teammates about Joakim, uh, and one of them was was with John Paxson. And I know Bulls fans don't like to really talk about John these days because he got you know special advisor title and he's not allowed to make any decisions anymore. And we're, ha- we're all happy about that. But John Paxson said, look, I took a lot of flack from a lot of people who thought that we should have taken Spencer Hawes instead. And that and that and like that's not revisionist history. There were plenty of people who thought the Bulls swung and missed by taking yeah. Joe Keem ins- instead of Spencer Hawes. And yeah. Pax took flack for it at the time. Turns out he was right. And, mm-hmm. and in that interview, John Paxson also recalled seeing Joe Keem play in a Florida game for the first time when the, you know Florida was playing in Madison Square G- Garden early in his collegiate career and thinking to himself and then telling, you know, scouts and the people around him, keep an eye on that kid. Mm. He doesn't stop. Mm. He he does not stop. He plays and plays and plays and plays. And John saw that from the get go with, with Joakim Noah. And look, so what I remember about that draft night was my brother texted me and was like, really this dude, this guy, with like a picture of him on, and I was like, dude, he just went back to back NCAA titles. You know how hard that is. You know how like that hasn't happened in a long time. Like yeah. not even Coach K's Duke Blue Devils are yeah. repeating at any point in, in this particular stretch of college basketball. Mm-hmm. That means something. And the fact that he was one of their best players, I was like, I don't care what he looks like. I do mm-hmm. not care what he looks like if he's good. I'm cool with it. Yeah. And, and like, Joakim had a rocky rookie year. There was mm-hmm. a thing where he called out then assistant coach Ron Adams, and yeah. his, uh, you know, he was issued a one game suspension by the team. And then a couple of vets on that team, Ben Wallace and Adrian Griffin, collectively voted to actually make it a two game suspension instead of one because they were like, hey, Rook, know your place. Yeah. Know your place. But even mm-hmm. as a rookie in that year where I think the Bulls went like, you know, 33 and 49 or whatever, mm-hmm. he wanted to win so badly that he was calling out vets in the locker room and at practice for not doing their job good enough. And it was yeah. like, 
he was so ready to take a leadership role on an mm. NBA team, and he was just like a little too eager, you know, cart before the horse kind of thing. But that tells you so much about how much success he had as he matured and became a vet. Like he was born to play that role on an NBA team. Oh, there's no doubt about it, Matt. Uh, you know, that's great that you said that too, because it's for me, it's kind of trying to break the spirit of somebody like that. And it it couldn't do that for Joe Kim Noah. You know what I'm saying? Like it didn't care because he knew he was right. And he was like, no, I'm correct. And I'm used to winning. You know what I mean? I'm here to, and I want to win and I'm want to win. This is, we're not working. This isn't working. <laughs> so why do we try it this way? Oh, you will. I don't like that stuff, Matt. When they say, oh, you're right, but you're not supposed to say it because it's not your place to say it. Who gives a damn? Like we're talking mm-hmm. about winning. You know what I'm saying? Like if he's right, then let's change it. And then you saw the records you have. And then that's why the people you named weren't there when the Bulls started, <laughs> started kicking off wins and things like that. Okay. Because we didn't have no room for that. But I think you hit that on the head right there, Matt. He was ready to be a leader. And he was ready to lead by example. And he was ready to lead vocally. He had all it covered, man. And all people had to do was just climb aboard and ride the Joe Kim Noah train, baby. It was beautiful to watch. And, um, you know, one of the other things that I always appreciated about Joe Kim Mm-hmm. is how much he also hated LeBron James because <laughs> I I have come to respect the talent and career achievements of LeBron James. You know this about me, but you also know, I'm pretty sure one of the first things you learned about me when we first met and we're getting acquainted is that I hate LeBron James. <laughs> true. I think he's an overrated true. drama queen crybaby. Who yeah. is, yes, wildly talented and has MVPs and championships and blah, 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 blah. Good for him. He's a flopping drama queen crybaby who loves himself a whole lot. And the I fact that Joe Keem saw that immediately and <laughs> called out LeBron every chance he got, I was like, I am in love with Joe Keem Noah. He and I <laughs> are same. It's like, you know. Yeah, I can promise like, Matt J- used Joe those and words. Tony Wonder and Arrested Development – same 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 <laughs> like and it was early on i think it was like maybe joe Kim's rookie year or second year the bulls are getting beat down i think they're down like almost 20 late in the game against the Cavs. lebron's been hot dog and showboating the whole game he's like you know shoulder mm-hmm. shimmying and dancing he's at the free throw line joe Kim's sitting on the bench mm-hmm. and they just start jawing at each other and jawing yeah. at each other and jawing at that. each other all the you know it escalated to a point where in between his two free throws LeBron walks over to try to escalate this confrontation between him and Joe Keem and Joe Keem's teammates yeah. have to like prevent yeah. him from rushing from the bench into Joe into LeBron's face. And I always appreciated that for all of the stardom and, and all of the here's your red carpet, sir, stuff that not only the NBA media, but NBA officials and other NBA players have given LeBron James his entire career. Joe Keem was like, no, nah, F all of that. F all of that. I'm trying to beat this guy and also knock his ego down a peg or two because his ego is through the freaking roof. Yeah. Joe Keem, I mean, I think that you 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 look into somebody's eyes, Matt, and then you realize, oh, snap, this person ain't all there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, no, this dude is crazy, crazy. You know what I'm saying? I think that's what happened with LeBron. <laughs> Like LeBron looked at his eyes and was like, oh, 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 you, oh, you, that guy. Okay. All right. Oh, all right. Uh, you know, I'm gonna keep this to a minimum a little bit. Like, cause Joe is that guy. You know what I'm saying? Like he wasn't about that, man. And you're right, Matt. He was all about taking them down a peg. It made the, the, the rivalry that much better and that much sweeter. Um, even calling them, you know, came up with the Hollywood is hell. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like we called him that. I know you love that so much. Mm. Um, yeah. It was just great. It honestly was. And he and he didn't hide from those things. He consistently told you, yes, I don't like them. Yes, mm-hmm. I want to beat them every time we play them. I have no love in my heart for them on that basketball court. And I want to beat them into the ground, into oblivion. He made no bones about it. And he came out there and he tried, even when he was injured. He was out, he was out there really trying to beat them, and I know you remember the the video of them in the playoffs when the Heat were yet were confused and yelling at each other. Joe Kim Noah comes over in there and just yeah, yeah. you know, in your face and things like that. 
that's different levels of stuff right there, ladies and gentlemen. And Joe Kim Noah was definitely made of that for real. Yeah, it really, I mean, that was one of so many amazing moments that so many. Joe Kim was at the center of in that Bulls Heatles rivalry that lasted for yeah. a few very fun years. The Bulls always coming out on the losing end in playoff games when it mattered, but still an amazing rivalry that Joe Kim built up by his dislike for, for LeBron and that entire Hollywood is hell crew. Um, yeah. All right. We got to talk about some of our more favorite on the court moments from Joe Kim Noah. Uh, and sure. we will do that in just a minute. But if you're maybe finding yourself a little bit hungry while you're listening to this podcast, maybe you want to grab yourself something to eat before you head to the United center for bulls. Knicks. If you're on your way there, uh, there's this little app called postmates. Not sure if you've heard of it. They're kind of a big deal and they are a new sponsor <laughs> here on locked on bulls do you smell that you smell that big dave smells like smells like beef in in beef gravy and, mm. and maybe some jar, some jardinier maybe some mm. fresh baked french roll mm. you know why because i that, ordered man. some portillos on postmates that's why with postmates i get all of my favorite foods from the local restaurants in my neighborhood delivered no leaving the house and even better no getting in the car and trying to find a parking spot have you ever sat through the portillo's drive through line before oh, takes away boy. half your day it half does. your day so use postmates and have somebody do that for you duh mm -hmm. postmates isn't all just about italian beefs or burritos or sushi you can order things like toothpaste phone chargers anything you can think of on demand because they also deliver from places like walgreens and 7-eleven anything wow. you could possibly need my favorite part, when the app lets me know that my food or my items have been delivered. Everything is right outside my door. It's so mm. cool and so easy. It never gets old. Just download <laughs> that Postmates on iOS or Android. Find your favorite foods or that one thing you forgot to get from the store and get it delivered on demand right now. And for a limited time, Postmates is giving just you, our Locked on Bulls listeners, a little something. New uh -oh. customers will get 50% off your first five orders of $50 wow. or more when you use code Locked On NBA. That's code Locked On NBA again to get 50% off your first one, two, three, four, fifth, first five <laughs> orders of $50 or more. Max savings of $100 per order. Just download that Postmates app or sign up online. It's super easy. Offer is subject to change in taxes and fees apply. Offer valid for 30 days after you add the promo code to your account. Postmates, oh. get yourself some food. Oh, that was amazing. And eating all that jardinera, eating that delicious beef, that Italian beef, guess what? Sometimes you might start sweating. It might start dripping on you because it's so good and it's so delicious. But guess what? Matt Peck didn't even notice that was happening. You know why? Because that man had on some sweat block. So it was blocking out the bad so he can continue with the good. Oh, won't you want to be part of that? Don't you want to be down with that? Well, let me tell you how. Matter of fact, first, let me tell you what the wonderful things that it does. It stops excessive sweat for up to seven days per use. It is doctor created. It is doctor recommended. And it has my favorite, ladies and gentlemen, the dry shirt guarantee. If sweat block does not keep you dry. Now, hear me closely. If sweat block does not keep you dry, you get your money back. Come on, man. And let me throw a little bonus on here for you. It's not just for the armpits. All right. You got other spots on you. That's a little sweaty. Feet, mm -hmm. hands, neck, a little bit or a little. Hoo -hoo. You can take care of that, too, baby. Because why? Because that's a sweat block and you can use it anywhere. And I mean, uh, nah. Wow. So if this is what you do. You head to sweatblock.com. You use that promo code locked on and you save yourself 20 percent off. Why wouldn't you want to do that? Well, fine. You can't get there. Well, how about you go to Amazon and get it? How about you go to CVS and do it that way? Still using that promo code, still saving you 20% off, y'all. So get you some sweat block and save yourself all kinds of problems and troubles. Sweat block! Stay dry. <sighs> oh. <laughs> He's going okay. to the joke team. <laughs> um. You mentioned you mentioned Hollywood is hell, right? I did. I did. That that came first after the Bulls were bounced out of the Eastern Conference Finals in 2011 in game mm -hmm. five. Joe Keem sitting in the locker room, despondent, depressed, frustrated, angry. Uh, and he's being asked to evaluate that heat team that they just went up against and, and couldn't get over. 
And among other things, he said, they're very good. They're Hollywood as hell, but they are very good. Very good. Mm -hmm. And whoever asked the follow-up was like, Hollywood? He was like, yes, <laughs> they are very Hollywood. And another moment that I, and I think a lot of Bulls fans like me, fell in love with Joakim all over again for the appreciation of, and like, yes, it sounds cliche, but the whole Chicago blue collar thing. And, and it mm. wasn't the first time that he had made it known that he was on our side as Chicagoans, as Bulls fans, That's saying true. things before that about like, you know, I'm playing for the guy who can only afford one game a season and, and he's up there with his kids in the 300 mm -hmm. level, or I'm mm -hmm. playing for the guy who is out there in the freezing cold in the dead of Chicago winter selling streetwise and like tells me to have a good game. Like I'm playing for mm -hmm. that guy mm -hmm. to hear as like we like the heat immediately became enemy number one to Bulls fans mm -hmm. that summer when they had that ridiculous celebratory rally when they hadn't even won a single freaking regular season game yet. Bullseye on their backs and Joe Keem more so than any Bulls player in the stretch of that entire little mini rivalry that lasted a few years circled the heat on his calendar every single time they played regular season or otherwise because he saw the way that that Hollywood is hell shit bugged him, irked him, and it made him want to beat mm -hmm. them even more. And I've always loved that about Joe. Yeah, it's it's the beauties about it, Matt. Like like I said, it's not just that he's saying it, it's that he's also doing it. And that's the important thing about him. Because you talked about the Hollywood is hell, but like when I think of favorite Joe Kim Noah moments, Matt, and there are several, like the few that pop up in my head, of course, my favorite one, the Boston Celtics. Triple overtime, mm. the steal, the breakaway, the dunk, and the foul. Matt, I will never, you know what? I always tell people that people that no, you will never get forget how someone makes you feel. Right. And I'll never ever forget that feeling that I had when Joe Kim Noah did that. It was the first time since the Bulls championship that I had that kind of feeling. Because mm -hmm. everything went according to how it's supposed to go in the best case scenario. You right. know what I'm saying? A steal in the triple overtime. You take it all the way. You dunk it. You get fouled. You foul out their best player. And you mm -hmm. hit the free throw. Mm -hmm. It was everything encompassed into one. And I just remember that play when he dunked it. Just the yell and the scream and the chest <sighs> bump that he had. <laughs> Man, man, I just remember. And, and, the and then the feeling. camera cuts to Doc Rivers going, oh. <laughs> hands on his knees like, it's over, isn't it? It's over, isn't it? It's over, isn't it? Yes, Doc, it was over. Game and over, I man. Just, I, will never, <laughs> I will never forget that feeling that I had because I haven't had it since. I honestly, I have not had that feeling right there since, and I will always love him for that. The other one I remember, Matt, is game seven against the New Jersey Nets. Um, when they, they played were the, the Brooklyn Nets, Nets by that point, yes, yeah, excuse me, you're right. They were the Brooklyn Nets at that point. You're right. And the but what they what two seed or something like that? They were two or three seed. Uh, they, they were a high I seed. I think they were maybe three. They they they, okay, they, yeah. they had they had game seven in Brooklyn. I can't right, remember if correct. it was the three six or the four or five, but the Bulls were the, the underdog. Yeah, they were the lower seed. Yeah, Bulls were definitely the lower seed. And I remember going to a bar in a uh, University Village, and my friend. uh Chris, who I do ball on bulls with, was with me. And I remember nope. we got a we got a nice spot in there. And I remember when the game started, how everything just swelled. Like I turned around and it was just so many people and everybody swelled, man. And the bulls hit the first shot and everybody lost their mind. Like it was on from that point. There was no point in time that I think the, thought the bulls were going to lose that game. And not because of you know, them having the better team, which I thought they had, but because of Joe Kim Noah, because he was out there on one leg. <laughs> you knew that he was hurt. And he had a game, Matt. He balled clean out against the New Jersey Nets, okay? And it was never in doubt in my mind. And I will never, again, I just won't forget that feeling. The last one I want to give to you, man, and then I'm going to pass it back here. Last one I want to give to you is probably my favorite game he'd ever played. And that was against Philly. When he had, the mm. triple double 23 mm -hmm. 21 and 11 blocks it was the game i remember i started telling people like you need to take notice of this because those are hakeem olajuwon numbers okay right. i kept right. telling people that like bro that's not normal 
<laughs> like what he did is not normal. I don't care what you're looking at, what you fit. That's not a normal thing to do. And he did it on national television. And then you saw the rest of the things he went on to get that year as far as the accolades and everything were concerned. Because that was an incredible year for him. I'll never forget that game, man. He just dominated from beginning to end. And he was the best player on the floor. And it was just beautiful to say that and beautiful to watch just because of who Joe Kim Noah is. That was, I got it. I got. I mean, I got so many different Joe Kim season game logs pulled up right now. February 28, 2013. Joe yep. Kim in, in classic Tibbs, 45 minutes on the floor. Yes. 23 points on 8 of 12 from the floor. 21 rebounds, mm -hmm. 11 blocks, three assists. And three steals. <laughs> oh, and, and three steals. Yeah. <laughs> he was he, everywhere. He was everywhere. Unbelievable. It's I mean, some, some of those games. And, like, I was looking. his So his 13-14 season, which, mm -hmm. you know, followed their amazing uh, uh, Brooklyn and then Miami two-round two playoff run in, at the end of 2013. We'll go back to that, that for a second. But 13-14 was the... Okay, you know Derek's down again, and uh, and Tom Thibodeau said we're just going to run our offense through you, and <laughs> he, I mean, dude, look, go back and look if you haven't looked at Joe Keem's 2013-14 game log in a while, just go. It My is God. it is ridiculous. It was the it's end like, of his career. <laughs> it's like at least a double double every night, and then yeah. some flirtation of triple double with assists and or blocks and or steals. Like yeah. the guy was, was everywhere. Defensive player of the year, all mm -hmm. NBA, all defensive mm -hmm. team, and mm -hmm. fourth in MVP voting. And that was, you know, that was the pinnacle of Joe Kim's individual Correct. talent and um and maxing out that talent and, and being mm -hmm. that big of a focal point of the team. But I think when it comes to the the maxing out of who Joe Kim was with, you know, heart and soul, Tom Thibodeau asked to talk about his years with Joe Kim after the Knicks win yeah. just the other night, said, yeah. great group of guys, a team that resonated with the city, and Joe Kim was the heart and soul of that team. That series against Brooklyn that you just mentioned, that was, that was the pinnacle to me. That mm. was Joe Kim Noah's fifth symphony that was yeah. his tour de force yeah. because you know you mentioned him playing on one foot mm. and i went back to double check you know that joe keem sat 12 of the final 15 regular season games that year with plantar mm. fasciitis mm. 12 of the last 15 games he sat because he was not healthy enough to play and then even in that series against brooklyn tibbs thibodeau was actually slowly ramping up his minutes. He only played yep. 13 and a half minutes in game one, mm -hmm. 25 and a half minutes in game two, 27 minutes in game three. And then by <laughs> games four, five, okay, 38, 43, 40. <laughs> yeah. That game seven. And and here's the other wrinkle of that game seven that is so Joakim. Mm -hmm. He guaranteed victory. He sure did. It yes, was a did. three to three series and he guaranteed victory. His teammates are falling left and right. Like he's dodging bullets. He's dodging mm -hmm. bad spinal taps that got his teammate Luol Dang in the hospital. Like Nate Robinson is hurling a bucket on the bench between like during timeouts. And on one foot, he said, game seven on the road. We got this. We're yep. going to win. I guarantee it. He pulled an MJ before game seven against Indiana in 98. But yep. MJ at least had the home ground. <laughs> Joe Kim guaranteed victory on the road. Injured. On the road on one foot. And you mentioned that he had a hell of a game. Here is that stat line for you in game seven against Brooklyn. 24 Same. on 12 of 17. 14 boards. Seven on each end. Seven offensive, seven defensive rebounds. Six blocks, two assists, and a steal. <laughs> That's ignorant. <laughs> it's ignorant. Do you in understand how good minutes. that is? In, in 41, 41 <laughs> minutes. You understand how good that is? That is crazy. And Matt, that, that was around the time where I kept being mad at, at uh, Joe Kim. No, because I knew Matt, because he kept dealing with those plantar fasciitis. And I kept saying, dude, it is them damn shoes. I was mm -hmm. like, I've never seen those shoes before. I kept screaming this on my podcast to people like, that what who nobody knows what these rooster shoes are, so I did a deep right. dive on them, 
and I found out they were tennis shoes and it was their first foray into making actual gym shoes. They had never made gym shoes before. I was like, this makes complete sense. He is hurt. Get them damn shoes off him and get him some damn Nikes. After that happened, you never heard of plantar fasciitis again, did you? You never bothered him like that no more. Oh, my God. Man. Although, you so know, mad. Big Dave, Nike used to just make tennis shoes and runner shoes. So maybe Joakim thought he had found the next Nike and just nobody oh, knew please. about it. <laughs> Nike, dude, listen, no. he was over in France. These shoes came from overseas, man. Damn it. <laughs> Nike, dude, yeah. where, what were you doing? I understand that he was trying it's, a new brand and I get it like that. But my God, it was driving me crazy. It was it was like the the Pam and Jim wedding episode of The Office where Kevin like has his shoes thrown out so he wears like Kleenex boxes on his feet to the <laughs> wedding reception. That was no, Joking's footwear of choice. And he's balling out like yeah. he's wearing bad shoes and balling out. That dude is special. So, here here are the other wrinkles of the Bulls winning that series against Brooklyn and then moving in to the second round semis against the Heat that I have always loved and cherished post game. I believe it was Rachel Nichols who interviews Joe Keem on the court immediately after the Bulls win game seven in Brooklyn uh, and, and, you know, asks him about his game. And he completely ignores that question. Uh, and then basically just said, we have a team full of fighters, man. You know, a lot of guys out, but a team full of fighters. And we just wanted to make the city proud, make Chicago proud. That was our whole thing. Like, I have the quote memorized because it means that much mm. to me. Because I was like, mm. dude, that is a soldier Whose, whose fellow soldiers are fallen on mm. either side of him and is still, while he has taken a bullet or two, is finding a way to win that fight and saying, I'm doing it for you. I'm doing it for Chicago. I'm doing it for Bulls fans. Mm -hmm. And that's what we all mustered our collective strength to win this game was thinking about them. And then second part of that immediate post game uh, on the court interview with Rachel Nichols, she asked him about, okay, now, Miami's on deck, conference semis. Mm -hmm. You guys are familiar. You've got a bit of a rivalry. And Joakim, of course, once again, offers praise for how talented that team is. Um, you know, the, the Bulls and, and Heat had some epic battle regular season games that season. Mm -hmm. And here they are going up against the Heatles in the playoffs again. And Joakim, with this just sly little smile, said, we'll see what happens. <laughs> and then you know what? And then you know what happened? You know what happened? Yep. <laughs> Joakim had a monster double double, and the Bulls oh. stole Game One in Miami. I, That's yes, what happened. Did. Yes, I love did. that. I love that maybe more than any Joakim thing I have ever loved is him just sly smile saying, "Oh, y'all think we're gonna get swept? We'll mm. see what happens." Yeah. And they won Game One in Miami. And then, of course, starting in Game Two, the NBA. And the officials were like, oh, wait, hold on. We actually have to make Miami win this series because it's Miami and they'll get the ratings. So the refs handed that series to Miami after the Bulls stole game one. But Joakim knew after exhausting his depleted resources to beat Brooklyn on their own game seven, he was already thinking, I'm about to go beat Miami and Miami in game one, MFers. Yeah. Just you yeah. watch. That was like if that game that uh, I've equated it to uh, Iverson's game that he won against oh, yeah. uh, the Lakers. Against That's the what Lakers. I've equa I've equated it to that many times cuz I'm like, dude, nobody get nobody gave for the chance in the hell to win anything in that. And on paper, they shouldn't have had a chance in hell to win any game in that because of how injured they were. Everybody was out, you know what I'm saying? Like you said, Lou Dane, we didn't even know if he would, you know, make it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like my god. But Joe Kim Noah said, "We'll see what happens." He told you that there's a chance. And so just you saying that lets you know, all right, we got a shot. You know what I'm saying? Joe Kim Noah created his own position. And I'm going to give Tibbs credit too, because he's the one who ran his offense through him. But Joe Kim Noah was a point center. That did not exist in the NBA before Joe Kim Noah. That was not mm -hmm. a thing. It was, why would it be a thing? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Why would you have your center running point? Why would he be that? But it worked with Joe Kim Noah incredible passer matt i'm talking about his passing skills were elite mm -hmm. and his the picks that he set and then when he got hot and and i mean when that jumper as funky as it looked when that mm -hmm. joint was falling matt it was it was listen he was unstoppable like bottom line of it because you weren't going to stop him from getting rebounds you weren't going to stop right. him from blocking shots because that, those are effort and that's what he was going to give you every single night but my god when that jumper was falling with it and he's shooting mm -hmm. like 12 or 17 
13, 13 or 18 like that, it's over for you because now you're demoralized on both ends of the floor, okay? Because yeah. he's talking to you and yelling at you the entire time while he's doing it. Um, another one that stands out to me, and we'll do a few more before, it, you know, and then we'll get out of here because we're already at 45 minutes. But, I, you know, you know me. I, I could talk about joking forever. Um, I know. <laughs> It was a regular season Sunday showcase on ESPN. Um, and I, I can't remember if it was 13, 14, 14. Uh, uh, I, I, it was at, le- at, at the latest 13, 14, because it was still Bulls heat, not back to Bulls Cavs. And Joe Keem's dad and some of his other family members are oh. at the UC watching the game. Yes. And Lisa yes. Salters is doing an mm-hmm. in-game, while the game was going on, picture-in-picture interview with Yannick Noah. And asking him about, you know, what is it that, you know, makes his son so formidable on the court. And as he's trying to answer Lisa Salter's question, Joakim has LeBron one-on-one like this on the yep. left elbow. And Yannick is saying, you know, Joakim, he's very focused. He's very focused. And Yannick is not focused on the interview. He's focused on watching Joakim. And, like, right after he says he's very focused, Joakim does this classic Joakim thing where he's sizing up LeBron one-on-one and he just claps in LeBron's face like yeah bring it bring it and then what happens LeBron tries to back him down fails Mm -hmm. Joakim forces him into a difficult fall away you know a fadeaway jump shot which LeBron misses Bulls get the rebound go the other way meanwhile Yannick Noah on camera on mic is having a conniption fit ignoring (laughs) Lisa Salters the Bulls miss the transition layup Joakim gets the offensive board and then going back up with it, gets fouled, draws the foul. Finally, there's a whistle and a stop of play. And, and Yannick Noah just stands up and like standing ovation while Joakim just goes scream stopping down the court. And I was like, that was maybe the most Joakim of all Joakim <laughs> moments. <laughs> and his dad just got to witness it right now. Like it was so yeah. special, man. I will, I will never ever forget watching that moment. It, yeah. And, and it's, doubly special because you get to see where he gets it from you Mm -hmm. know what i'm saying where that fire comes from and why he's like the way he is uh even just speaking with his father and hearing interviews about his father you know why he's a free spirit like he is you know what i'm saying like because he's very close with his dad you know why he's into sports like he is you know what i mean like you see Mm -hmm. it all you know what i mean and why he has that heart and why he has that toughness on top of all of that you know what i'm saying so you you see it also seeing that moment and seeing the the son, right, and then the father, you know what I'm saying, doing it like that. It, 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 you're right. It, it was amazing to watch. It, You know what? I, I just thought of another moment I loved. When they played Sacramento, and, oh. and that game when they were on the road, man. And I mean, the refs were having a horrible game. They were calling some trash that game. I remember it well. They were calling a lot of trash that game. And choke him <laughs> He just pulled a got, star face. <laughs> oh, my God. He just got completely fed up. And like Matt said, he pulled a star face of half bank. And, and I mean, before he left, he made sure. He made eye contact with all of them. And they all got some of that. And you, where you at? Where you at? And you, and you, where he at? Behind, and you, like he let every <laughs> single person know how he felt. All of those reps. I loved it so much. Because one, he was right. Because I'm telling you, those refs were trash that game. He was correct. Oh, yeah. But, oh, yeah. But two, it was controlled chaos, Matt. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? It was he he knew why he was mad. He wasn't taking it off, taking it out on everybody around none of that stuff. No, I'm mad at you because you suck right now and right. you're getting all of this. It was beautiful controlled chaos. There are a lot of players players who can't do that. You know what I'm saying? Like when they're angry. It's taking out on everybody else around them. You know what I'm saying? Right. Joe was never really like that, man. Joe was like, yo, I'm mad at you, and that's who I'm coming at. I'm mad at LeBron. Guess what? I'm mad at you, LeBron. That's it. Mm-hmm. Nobody else around. Yeah. It's just you. That's why I love Joe Kim Noah so much. It was always controlled chaos with him, man. And he was right. He was just yeah. right. And yeah, I, I actually went back and watched that one too yesterday or this morning. The the Joe Kim in Sacramento. It as he's like and the camera stays on him as he's getting like shoved down the tunnel <laughs> and away from as he's like fighting whoever security guard is pushing him into the tunnel he comes back for like two more like no no <laughs> you and you it's like dude you're halfway out you're halfway out the tunnel 
let it go. Joe Gibbs is like, I will not let it go. I will but not let it go. That, I mean, that, it's that same fighting spirit that, that made Bulls fans always love and appreciate him. And, um, you know, like standing up for his teammates in a very similar way, mm. whether it was um, on the court or off the court. An on the court example that I always think of is going back to that 2013 second round series against Miami. Uh, Chris Birdman Anderson absolutely wallops Nate Robinson driving to the bucket. Little, you know, baby Nate Robinson, all of five foot five, mm -hmm. and then kind of like lands on him. Joakim comes in from out of nowhere and like picks up Chris Birdman Anderson and throws him off of Nate Robinson. Like, man, get the get the f off my teammate. I mean, at any time there was any kind of, oh, is one of my teammates about to get into it with somebody? Hold on. Let me get into it with them. Mm -hmm. He was always, I got your back. And then the way that that translated to how he defended his teammates and was there for his teammates off the court. And I'm talking about Derrick Rose with a torn ACL yes. that the, for whatever reason, the Bulls organization let it leak that he was medically cleared to come back while the Bulls are fighting their way through this playoff run. And media, national, Chicago, everywhere are saying, why isn't Derek playing? Why isn't Derek playing? Why isn't Derek playing? Joakim went to bat for his teammate and his friend repeatedly, 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 even saying things to the national media and on national radio, y'all need to shut up because you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. I mean, that is being there for your teammate. And he was like that with everyone, like you said, Matt. Like, it wasn't just Derek. You know, he was just the, the glowing example of that kind of thing. But he was like that with all his teammates. And I love how all of them just speak so glowingly about him, and they all tell you that he was out of his mind. And, and that was the greatest part about it. You know, you all, we all have those friends, and maybe you, some of us are those friends uh, yeah. to other friends. But that Who one that everybody is like, like, yeah, this dude is nuts. <laughs> You remember when 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 he was in Memphis, in Memphis Cove, when Bernie, I can't think it was Bernie Bickerstaff, was yeah. it? Who was their coach? It was like man, Joe Keem's effing crazy. Like, <laughs> like, like, like you know, yeah, he didn't even sugarcoat none of that. You know, what I'm saying? he just told you, dude. Like this dude is effing crazy, man. Yes, he is, and and we love him for it so much. I just got one more question because I know we gotta get out of here. Just yeah. got one more question for you, man. How happy were you that Joe Kim Noah? never played for LeBron James and the Lakers. Oh God. Oh, so, so glad. So glad. Cause you know, I, I think LeBron, especially as he's aged and is like, all right, which, which random vets do I need to bring in this season to try to help me win a ring? And then the next day fire everyone, trade everyone. Okay. Who else can I use? Who else can I use? Uh, speaking of my hatred for LeBron, <laughs> I, I never honestly worried about it that much, Dave. Because I don't think that Joe Keem would have ever wanted to be his teammate. I really don't. Fair. I think he Fair. disliked LeBron that much. That's not to say he doesn't respect LeBron's greatness. He right. very much does. Right. But no, you you think Joe Keem wants to be a, a you know a sideshow element to the LeBron show to mm -hmm. the LeBron entourage? No, his last his last go round. And look, I don't know if the Lakers even made a call to, to Joaquin. Maybe maybe we're interested. Maybe they weren't. And maybe LeBron feels the same way about Joaquin. Maybe LeBron's like, I never want to play with that guy. That guy's right. like, that guy's crazy. And he's been <laughs> making my life on the court miserable for my entire mm -hmm. career. Um, but he went and signed with the Clippers. His last NBA stint was the other LA team. The other Not LA LeBron's team. LA team. Yeah. But what, was I ultimately relieved that it did never happen when he finally announced his retirement for real? Yes. Because I I did not want to see that. You know, I was such a a like impromptu Clippers mega fan that one season because I wanted to see Joe Kim win his ring. He was crazy, y'all. So badly to see Joe Kim win a ring. <laughs> yeah, but he did. It wasn't in the cards, and I'm yeah. you know I like I like the fact that Joe Kim and LeBron never became teammates. To my knowledge, never became friends of any kind. Because you know what. You and I grew up in a time when the NBA was about rivalries and right. rivalries that was like, we will draw blood on the court tonight. Yeah. And y'all better just deal with that. Refs, fans, whoever, y'all deal with that. We're out for blood. That mm -hmm. doesn't exist in the NBA anymore because everybody's just all mm -hmm. chummy, chummy and buddy, buddy with everybody. And that's True. another thing that I loved about Joe Keem and LeBron. They honestly hate each other. 
and they never were buddy buddy because f that this is competition it's beautiful it's beautiful we gotta go it's beautiful we gotta go La- <laughs> last one La- very last one okay christmas day special bulls nets Joaquin on an inbounds play is sizing up Kevin uh, Kevin Durant, Kevin Garnett, who who you know KG and Joaquin, another pair who hated each other, did not like and each other. KG is like leaning down into Joaquin, trying to get into his body, and the camera catches uh, KG snapping with his teeth at Joaquin's hands while he's trying try to d him up, mm-hmm. like arr, arr, like biting at Joaquin, mm-hmm. and I was like. Man, and speaking of people who are crazy mother mother waters, like you, are you trying to bite Joakim Noah right now? And Joakim like looked at KG like you were like talk about a vet on his last legs trying to come up with other various ways to get in my head or beat me. I was you know I always thought I always thought about that line from the second Ace Ventura. I didn't know that the Wachutus were biters. biters. <laughs> Kevin Garnett biter, freaking crazy. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we gotta we gotta get out of here. Um, go, <laughs> thank you for <laughs> thank you for appeasing me and letting us talk about Joakim Noah for forty five minutes. Yeah. Um, everybody enjoy Bulls Knicks um, tonight, and hopefully Zach Levine is there playing. Uh, hopefully Joakim gets a uh, a raucous ovation from the crowd. You know I'll be there clapping and probably also crying uh, mm. along with Big Dave. You'll probably to it. Well, yeah. well, <laughs> like like Joakim going at LeBron. He, Big Dave will be trying to hold me back. Um, yes. <laughs> it's the fact. It's my only goal here, guys. <laughs> oh, my goodness. We'll be back uh, with another episode on deck for you uh, the day after today. Um, in the meantime, follow us on Twitter, Bulls underscore Peck, B-A-W-L Sports, and at ah. Locked on Bulls. That text and voicemail line, 331-979-1369. For Big Dave, I'm Matt. Happy Joe Keem Day, everybody. We'll see you next time.